Hello guys, welcome back, PK here. So in this video, I'm working on this interesting killer calculus question from 2023, Korean SAT math, with Tom Crawford from Tom Rocks Math, so stay tuned. Okay, here's a summary of the question. The full description of the question is in the beginning of the video. Okay, so the f of x is a cubic function with a positive leading coefficient, and g of x is e to the power of sine pi x minus 1. And h of x is a composite function, g of f of x. Then we have two conditions. h of x is having local maximum value of 0 when x is equal to 0. And then there are seven distinct real roots to h of x is equal to 1. And then open interval from 0 to 3. Some other conditions are f of 3 is equal to 1 over 2, and f prime of 3 is equal to 0. And then if f of 2 is equal to q over p, where p and q are relative prime natural numbers, what is going to be p plus q? Okay, so first of all, let's think about this f of x. Your f of x is a cubic function with a leading coefficient that is positive. So that's why your f of x anyway should be looking just like this. Then moving on to this g of x, that is e to the power of sine pi x minus 1. Well, g of x is the composite function itself because we have e to the power of sine pi x. So that's why if you're thinking about the sine pi x and how it looks like on the graph. First of all, the period of this sine pi of x is going to be now 2 pi over pi, which is equal to 2. So that's why graph should be looking just like this. And we have like 1 and 2 and 3 and so on. Okay, but then again, your g of x is going to be e to the power of sine pi x minus 1. So we can think about how this g of x looks like on the graph. It should be looking similar with the sine pi of x because if you plug it in those numbers, 1, 2, 3, those integers, to the x, then the y value of g of x are still equal to 0. So that's why your g of x should be looking just similar to this. Okay, then we have 1, 2, 3, and 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and so on. And then, since if you plug it in those numbers, 1 to 8 and so on, the y value of g of x has to be 0. So that's why it is looking just like this, oscillating graph. Okay, but then again, for example, for that maximum value, the x value has to be equal to 1 over 2. And then 5 over 2 and so on. So if you think about this maximum value of g of x, if you plug it in, for example, 1 over 2 to the x, then we should have e to the power of 1, which is equal to e. And then e has to be around... 2.7 and so on. So that's why maximum value of g of x has to be around 1.7. So that's why the maximum value of this g of x is a little higher than the sine pi of x, which means the minimum value of the g of x has to be a little higher than negative 1. So it should be also looking just like this then. So looking quite similar with the sine pi of x, but different. Okay, then moving on to this first condition of the question. h of x has local maximum value of 0 when x is equal to 0. So that is why we already know that h of 0 has to be equal to um, g of f of 0. It has to be equal to 0. Then at the same time, if you get your derivative, h prime of 0, which has to be g prime of f of 0. That times f prime of 0. This needs to be equal to 0, too. So based on this, we can think about which one of these two, g prime of f of 0 or f prime of 0, or both of them are equal to 0. So if you're thinking about this part, g prime of f of 0, in order for this g prime of f of 0 to be equal to 0, then the y value of g of x, when your x is, for example, like 1 over 2, 
or 5 over 2, or 9 over 2, and so on. Corresponding y value of g of x should be equal to 0, but they are not equal to 0, but 1.7. So that is why g prime of f of 0 is not equal to 0, which means only this f prime of 0 needs to be equal to 0. Okay, knowing this, then we can go back to this f of x. Question said f of 3 is equal to 1 over 2, and f prime of 3 is equal to 0. And then we just found f prime of 0 is equal to 0. So that's why right at this point, the corresponding x value has to be 0. And at this point, your x value has to be 3. Then since f of 3 is equal to 1 over 2, corresponding y value is 1 over now 2. Okay, then we can use this interesting ratio property of the cubic function. That means the ratio of the distance to this to that has to be 1 to 2. Okay, so this distance is now 3, 0 to 3. And then that distance has to be half of 3, that is 3 over 2. So that's why corresponding x coordinate at this point has to be the negative 3 over 2. Okay, so using this, we can make your f of x by calling k as the positive leading coefficient. So let me call your f of x, then using right at this point, right? Using right at this point, for example, the corresponding y value has to be 1 over 2. So let me use this point to make your f of x. So your f of x minus corresponding y value, that is 1 over 2, has to be equal to the leading coefficient. Let me call that as the k. That times, now we have a bounce when your x is equal to 3. So that's why x minus 3 squared. That times, corresponding coordinate of the x at this point is negative 3 over 2. So that's why we should have x now plus 3 over 2. Okay, so we can make your f of x is then k times x minus 3 squared times x plus 3 over 2. Okay, then that plus 1 over 2. Okay, now we can move to the second condition. There should be seven distinct real roots to h of x is equal to on the open interval from 0 to 3. So that's why if you go back to this f of x, then the range has to be this. The corresponding y value has to be then greater than 1 over 2. So if you put simply uh, the 1 of the y value on this, And then we should have some intersection, like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and so on. But then again, right at this point, this has to be excluded because of the range of your y value. Since we're only considering this open interval from 0 to 3. So that's why now this point is not included. So that's why we can think about whether we should count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, or we should count from this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. In order for us to decide, then we need to think about the value of f of 0. So the question is if f of 0 is 7 or 8. Or 8. Then using this first condition, h of x should have local maximum, which means it should be looking just like this. So it should be having positive slope to negative slope. So that's why if you consider the 7, the so sign change has to be from plus to negative. And for this 8, sign change has to be from negative to positive. Knowing how your h prime of 0 is g prime of f of 0 times f prime of 0. So that's why we should know your f of 0 has to be equal to 8, because your h of x should have its local maximum value. Okay, so we just figured out f of now 0 is equal to 8. So we can just plug it in, right? So if you plug it in, then we should have 8 um, is equal to k times negative 3 squared uh, times 3 over 2 plus 1 over now 2. Okay, so making a calculation, your k has to be equal to 5 over 9. So that is why your f of x is just equal to 5 over 9 times um, x minus 3 squared times x plus 3 over 2 plus 1 over 2. 
question is asking for this f of 2. So we can just plug it in 2 to the x. So that is why f of 2 is equal to 5 over 9 times negative 1 squared. Okay, that now times uh, 2 plus 3 over 2. That is going to be 7 over 2 plus 1 over 2. So making a calculation for this, it has to be now 35 over 18 plus 1 over 2. It should be the same as now then 44 over 18. Since question said P and Q are relative prime natural numbers, so that's why if you divide both numbers by 2, then it has to be 22 over 9. Okay, so that's why P plus Q has to be 22 plus 9 is equal to 31. So 31 is the answer for this question. Okay, so pretty interesting calculus question from 2023 Korean SAT math. So I'll be back with more videos, more questions like this sometime soon.